everybody. You know, there are two kinds of people. Those who believe that VR is going to die and those who believe that VR is going to fly. Well, if I were to tell you the truth, the virtual reality has already taken off. It's everywhere. All of you are in virtual reality right now. You are not sitting here. You are somewhere else. Everything you can see around, you see in a virtual reality head-mounted display. I don't think anyone would believe me. In the first place, because everyone knows that virtual reality doesn't look real. A conference session in virtual reality wouldn't look like that. It would look like this. Let me do some back and forth for you to have a better feeling of virtual reality experience. You cannot see fine details. The picture is blurred and filled with color artifacts, color fringing. And the quality gets even worse if you move your eye pupil off the optical axis of the lens so you cannot even look around by moving your eyeballs like you normally do in real life. If you do not want to lose the quality, you have to look straight at all time and look around by swinging your head like this. It looks pretty funny and it's totally unnatural. Let's be honest, in terms of the image quality, the picture quality, the virtual reality displays comparing to, say, normal computer displays are now somewhere in the era of disco, if not twist. In order to satisfy our existing, our modern consumer expectations and professional demands, it must improve. And to the question, how do we get there? The common answer is by increasing the display resolution, of course. 4K, 5K, 8K, whatever megapixel per eye, just more pixels, better quality. I have bad news for you. It's not going to work. In a head-mounted display, besides the display itself, besides that matrix with the pixels, there is also a lens. A high-quality display shows you a good quality picture. To see it, you need a good lens. Now, what comes to your mind when you think about good lens? Something like this? Something there is no room for in a head-mounted device. There is room for something like this. Now, imagine using your super high-quality Canon camera or Nikon or Hasselblad with this as a lens. I don't think you would be expecting to get a picture of any good quality. But that is just the beginning of the trouble. The optical system of an HMD contains the eye pupil. And the eye pupil is essentially a lens element, and it moves. It moves when you're moving your HMD. It moves when you're looking around by moving your eyeballs. So any optical design of the HMD lens made an assumption that the eye pupil is somewhere, like at the center, at the optical axis, doesn't work anymore when you look to a side. It's a completely different optical flow, completely different system. Those two physical problems, physically irresolvable problems, prevent uh, the VR and AR head-mounted displays to achieve high quality. With those problems outstanding, the high pixel density alone doesn't work. The HTC Vive Pro is a great example of that. It has substantially higher resolution than the original Vive, but the users do not see much of an improvement. In this slide, there is a quote from one of the first reviews of the Vive Pro. I'd like to draw your attention to the words. Make much of that extra resolution is useless. Sounds desperate, but actually that's the point where the story gets optimistic. We have found the solution. And to explain the idea, let's first imagine we have built an optical system that we need. It will contain several corrective lens elements to achieve the maximum acuteness to get rid of the aberrations completely. It will be dynamically adjusting on the fly to the eye pupil position. Now, how do we keep the optical performance of such lens and preserve the size and the weight of the device? The idea is, as the display gets 
digital image data as the input, we will move this corrective lens system behind the display and we'll make it not of glass or plastic, we'll implement it as a digital process, an algorithm that gets the image data from the renderer, that gets the eye tracker data to know exactly where the eye pupil is at this very moment, to know exactly how the optical system looks like at this very moment, and then it applies to the image a pre-aberration that is inverse to the aberration that will happen in the physical part of the optical system that sits in front of the display. This digital pre-aberration is canceled then against the physical aberration. The user sees high resolution, non-aberrated, high quality picture. For this component to be digital and doing a job of a lens element, we call it the digital lens. In the next few slides, I will show you the effect that it can produce. Uh, this is our optical measurement setup. Looking inside uh, the HMD, there is an artificial eye there. Uh, essentially a camera with optical properties close to the ones of a human eye. It allows us to take pictures that a human would see wearing an HMD. And then we can do some uh, objective quality measurements. So speaking of the measurements, let's start with the most obvious part, the color fringing, chromatic aberrations. That's the number one problem that one would see when looking at a picture in an HMD. The chart here pictures the level of color fringing uh, starting from the center towards the edge of the field of view uh, with the eye located precisely at the optical axis of the lens in the center. The next chart, the eye pupil is three millimeters off. It's like me looking not like that straight, but like this, not much. The next chart, six millimeters off. The blue lines represent the wife pro as it is. Uh, the first you can see with the eye pupil moving off the optical axis, the chromatic aberrations outburst. And the growth of the level of aberrations is really steep. So you start getting really bad quality, pretty close to the center of the field of view. Most of the rest of the field of view is filled with aberrations. Now the green lines represent physically the same device, the same Vive Pro unit equipped with digital lens. What we see in the first place that even in the worst case, the eye is way off. We are doing measurements at the edge of the field of view. The digital lens suppresses the chromatic aberrations below the level achieved by the Wife Pro itself only in the ideal case. And this level steeply goes down when we move from the edge towards the center of the field of view. So across the most of the field of view, the image is non-aberrated. This leads us to a kind of a new notion of the field of view. The wide field of view is one of the top features that we want for head-mounted display, right? But the question is, do we really want it if the quality at those wide angles will be awful? If you look at the part of the field of view in the Vive Pro, where the color fringing is considerably unnoticeable, it's not a big part, it's a pretty small part. Another small part where the aberrations are moderate and the rest, the aberrations are really noticeable and annoying. Now, do we want to add a wider angle to add that red area? Probably not. But if we have an opportunity to improve the optical system with the digital lens, We are getting rid of aberrations across the entire field of view at all gaze directions. Now it makes a perfect sense to design a wider field of view lens. Moving from this most obvious part, let's, uh, let's move to the uh, most impressive part, the resolution. Measuring the resolution uh, with the Vive Pro, again, from the center towards the edge of the field of view, with the eye pupil perfectly located at the optical axis, there is 5x degradation of the resolution from the center towards the, towards the edge. The eye pupil moves three millimeters off. Another two-fold degradation. 
Again, this degradation comes from the optical system. So to improve it, it's not enough to just put a high resolution display. It's not going to work. With the lens improvement, with the digital lens, we are getting resolution improvement across the entire field of view at all gaze directions. The maximum achieved improvement of the visible resolution. I'm not talking about the display and resolution. I'm talking about the visible resolution. is 2.7x. And what is really important and impressive, the resolution substantially improves, even in the ideal case. You're looking straight at the center. Your eye is at the optical axis. You adjusted the HMD ideally. With the digital lens, you see much more details. Now, getting back to the statement that I made a few slides back, high pixel density alone doesn't work. Here, where the Vive Pro achieves the maximum of visible resolution, and here, where it's twice as low, and here, where it's five times low, and here, where it's 10 times lower, lower that's the same display, the same pixel density, the same display resolution. You cannot fix that quality degradation using high resolution display, you need a better lens. You have to solve those two fundamental physical problems. No room for a good complex optical system in a head mounted display, and even more fundamental problem, the movement of the eye. You cannot fix it unless you want to really spoil user experience. Now the digital lens, a corrective lens component which has no weight, no size, and it has an ability to dynamically adjust to every eye pupil position is an enabler. It solves those two physical problems. It removes a fundamental roadblock on the way for VR and AR HMDs to achieve high quality. It's gonna be an essential component, an indispensable component for the next generation high resolution, wide field of view, high, high picture quality devices. The good news, as a, because of its digital nature, it can be implemented virtually for any device, for any architecture. It can be an algorithm running on a GPU or on a dedicated vision processing unit, or it can be implemented in silicon. It can be a part of the render pipeline. It can work directly on a discrete display chip and for the reference, the currently achieved latency with the Vive Pro uh, and NVIDIA 1080 graphic card is less than half of millisecond. Now, those of you who prefer to look at the real thing rather than on the quality measurement charts are very welcome to check out our demo at Boost 615. <laughs>